On July 11, 1985, Tyson had his fifth professional fight against John Alderson. They were both undefeated and had almost identical records. Well, we're ready to get going for fighting here. Mike Tyson, Big John Alderson. Let's meet the officials that'll be handling the fight at ringside and meet the combatants with our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Trump Casino Hotel on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, let's get ready to rumble. This is in the heavyweight division, scheduled for six rounds, and something's got to give. They're both undefeated. The referee for this bout is Frank Cappuccino. Introducing first in the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim, weighing 226 and one half pounds from Cabin Creek, West Virginia. His professional record, four consecutive victories all by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, John Alderson. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with red, white, and blue trim and weighing in at 215 pounds even, from Catskill, New York. His professional record, also four consecutive victories, all by knockout, introducing uh, Mike Tyson. He'll be the popular one tonight as Frank Chappuccino talks to him. I want you to understand one thing, I want a good, clean, hard fight. Any low blows, any thumbing, healing, butting, the holding and hitting will cost you the round. And if I have to go further, I'll do that also. In the event of a knockdown, the man standing, go to the farthest neutral corner, stay there until I call him back. Okay? When I say break, I want you to protect yourself at all times, and you step back clean. Both of you understand that. Both of you touch gloves. Good luck. Well, the folks back in West Virginia may not recognize this man without his miner's head. He's come out of the mines to fight. He won May 31st, a second-round knockout over George Mayweather. And his opponent also with a one-round, as a matter of fact, 39-second fight against Rick Spain here in Atlantic City on June 20th. That's Tyson. Tyson in the white with the red stripe, solid red trunks. With the white stripe will be John Alderson. Alderson, a tremendous height advantage. Al, how much will that play a factor in tonight's fight? Well, he has got to keep Tyson off him. Use the jab, the straight right hand. And Mike Tyson gets inside very effectively. It's one of the things he does. So, And he'll go to the body once he gets there. So I don't know if the height in itself will be a big edge for Alderson. Alderson said, if he does get inside, look for me to tie him up. I'm not going to try to rumble with him in there. I don't blame him. So Frank Cappuccino will have a busy night tonight, and this six-rounder may not last very long with the kind of shots there. A left hook right to the face that time of Alderson. That was a strange punch, but Tyson is so powerful. No matter how he delivers those punches, they hurt. For every punch Tyson throws is meant to knock you out. Now, as he gets on against tough competition, the question is, when he comes in like this, will he get nailed with counter shots? That's really what Alderson wants to do. Tyson, you heard documented, of course, the young man fighting and fighting very well, amateur, 25 and 2. A boxing historian reads book after book through boxing and watches all historic films of the greats. He's got an edge. His manager, Jimmy Jacobs, uh, has the largest fight film collection in the world. So you know, he can look at all those. He does look at all the former heavyweight champs. And of course, he's a long way from being that. But he's such raw talent is his, at his age, you can't help but think about it. How, how much pressure and how much can a 19-year-old take putting the pressure on to be the youngest champion in the world? I, well, of course, that's them talking. That's Customato and Tyson making these bold predictions. Uh, and they put pressure on themselves. Now, Tyson switches to Southpaw. I haven't seen him do that before. Interesting. Lands with a lead left. Alderson is already bleeding from the nose, and I think that was from the very first left hand. Tyson, you can see almost like a bull as he just chases Alter Alderson around the ring. Big John said he had to get off first tonight. He has got to use those long arms to his advantage. He has not been able to do so so far in round one. You know, when Tyson switches to softball, I think that's the clue for uh, Alderson with that long reach and height to throw the straight right hand. I would just let that punch go. Alderson, a very good amateur record, 154 and 12, took three years off from boxing, however. Worked in the mines in West Virginia. They started the laying off down there, and he went back into the boxing ring. And here he is at 4-0 with four knockouts. And already he's had a rugged first round. For Alderson, I think the key, he has got to throw that jab and follow with the straight right. Has done that only once and did land the right, although it didn't hurt Tyson. 
There it is. Now that right missed, but if he keeps doing that, he's going to give Mike Tyson something to think about as he comes in. There it is again, and he landed the right. At least to keep him from lunging at him with the big hands that he's throwing That's so far. exactly right, Sam. So the closing seconds of round number one, Mike Tyson, the short of those two against Big John Alderson. Mike Tyson delivers punches off in a very awkward fashion. Look at this left hand. That was a jab, but uh, boy, he was off balance when he threw it. Still had a lot of power against Alderson. This is round number two of a scheduled six-rounder heavyweights. Mike Tyson in the white trunks. Big John Alderson in the red. Alderson hailing from Cabin Creek, West Virginia, the home of the great basketball player, former Los Angeles Laker Jerry West. Alderson, as a matter of fact, plays basketball and softball just to stay in shape right now. I'd take him as the center of my ball club. Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> Muscle underneath. Now, Tyson, they told him to go to the body. He's trying to do that in this round. But uh, Mike hasn't been that busy when he gets on the inside. Good uppercut by Tyson. Allerson, you saw there, tried to lead in with a left jab and a right hand, but left himself wide open for the ducking Mike Tyson as he went right underneath. Mike Tyson doesn't wear any socks. I don't remember seeing a fighter in a long time that doesn't wear any socks. Or if he does, they're so short, they don't even peek out over his, uh, his shoes. I don't know what that's I have apropos yeah, of. That. I have never, no it's, it's the first time I've ever seen it, and it's kind of <laughs> odd. Now there's the right, oh, good countering right hand, and that stunned Alderman. He oh. backs up another right hand, a combination by Tyson, and he goes on the attack. On the inside, Tyson is, is just ferocious. He throws those good, short, quick punches. The longest fight Tyson has ever been in has been a four-rounder. He got a knockout there. His other three fights were first-round knockouts. Dan Halpin, I guess, is the only man, and this one may not go much longer as a crushing right hand sends Alderson down. He's got a terrible cut over the left eye already. Frank Cappuccino right down in his face. He's going to make the count at eight. But that cut just on the outside of the left eye starts to ooze some blood now, and Tyson goes right back in on top of it. Tyson trying for his fifth straight knockout. Alderson, weary on his feet, ready to go at any time. He's just trying to survive now. He's got to throw something out, though. He's laying in with Tyson. Frank may stop this fight. Reeling that as a slip, not a knockdown. Alderson peeking in over that swelling left eye, and here comes Tyson. Alderson throwing the right hand, no effect. Left hand that time, since he reeling against the ropes. He's almost virtually out on his feet right now, 29 years of age. Again, as I pointed out at the top of the show, that in itself could prove to be some difference in this fight, if nothing else. You know, Tyson looked at Cappuccino a moment ago as if, uh, do you want to stop this? There he goes right back to work on that left eye as Alderson stays on his feet. Try to gamely throw a right hand as you see the closing moments of the second round here. Alderson down in this round. May survive as he goes down again at the bell. He's got to get up. Now, a fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round with the exception of the last. So he must come to his feet at the ruling of the referee says, okay. He is and he goes into his corner. But if he comes out to answer this bell, it'll be a gutty performance by Big John Alderson. Here's his mouthpiece. Here's his mouthpiece. Here. Here's his mouthpiece. the suggestion of the doctors leaning in of why don't you just come back and fight another day yeah, Frank Cappuccino has not given us a word yet that this one is over but he may very shortly here John church is out the fight's over the fight is over rather interestingly put by Frank Cappuccino as this one ends officially a TKO in the second round by Mike Tyson so Tyson goes 5-0 with all five knockouts, and it was a devastating second round that proved to be the difference. The short right hands. Now, what happened is Alderman tried to throw the right hand uh, continually, but what happened was Tyson learned how to counter it with his own right. And there's a good straight right hand by Mike Tyson. That sent Alderson down, and uh, that was the first knockdown, I believe. And uh, there's a happy Mike Tyson. You know, Al, you almost, as you pointed out, Mike kept looking to Frank Cappuccino saying, hey, this guy's not in real good shape. I can go ahead and keep hitting him, but uh, indeed he did till the end of the round. Again, Alderson down at the end of the round. 
He had to clear the canvas by the count, uh, obviously beat the count, not saved by the bell. He does, and finally the doctors lean in and say, that's it, and Frank Cappuccino calls it off at the end of two. It was a very typical Tyson performance. However, you know what? It showed both the good and the bad at this point of Tyson because I think it showed that a good stand-up boxer with a good jab and a good straight right hand will land against him. Whether he'll hurt him, I don't know. But as you look at that young man for 19, you have to like the strength and aggressiveness he has. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Cappuccino stops the bout at the end of the second round. The winner by technical knockout, still undefeated, five in a row, all by KO, Mike Tyson. Well, Tyson, it looks like he may have just had a walk in the park rather than a fight tonight with Big John Alderson. Here at the Trump Casino Hotel in Lenox City, got to see Mike Tyson work a little longer than he did his last fight that went only 39 seconds. Gets a second round TKO and he visits with Al Bernstein in the ring, huh? Well, Mike Tyson, uh, it was a performance in which you showed, I thought, the power that we know you have and the aggression, but also maybe walked into a couple more right hands than you'd like. Well, it, the right hands that I walked into wasn't catching me solidly. They were grazed in wet right hands, which I'm very peculiar when the right hand comes. Excellent. The right hands are mostly never effective on catching me because I'm always slipping with them, and I'm on an angle which the points go diagonally forward. Okay, let's take a look at the, the last knockdown when you send him down, and you can comment on it for us. Well, it's rolling a little bit in our monitor, but basically uh, you really had a lot of power and you were nailing him with short punches. Um, um, I was nailing with punches because I saw he was more accepted to the right hand because he was leaning on his, leaning on his right, right hand side. Right. And he's more acceptable to the right hand. Um, I felt a little funny. I wasn't right. I wasn't Mike Tyson that you saw mm -hmm. earlier us in the past because of the star buildup. It was a little intimidating. Are you, is all that getting to you a bit? Now, you've placed a lot of pressure on yourself. You and Customato, he's stated flatly he thinks you're going to be the youngest heavyweight champion, the greatest heavyweight champion. What does all that do to your mental frame of mind? Well, I don't look at it that way because deep inside, when I'm not involved with boxing, I'm just a 19-year-old kid. <laughs> and okay. when I'm in the ring, yeah. then that's when I take care of business. Today was more difficult, uh, a rugged performance because of the man's height. Mm -hmm. and, and he wasn't there to fight, he was there to try to last. He wasn't there really to fight, yeah. and he was running, and it made it more difficult because he's only there to survive. All right, well, Mike, congratulations. You got the win. That's the key. Excuse me, I would like to say happy birthday to my friend, Diane Irvis. God bless you, and hope to have many more birthdays. All right, you gave her a little birthday present.